Welcome to Simpler Bible, a daily journey to biblical understanding. As we're getting close to wrapping up the Psalms, we find ourselves today for episode 121 in Psalm 145. And I really, really enjoy Psalm 145. There's some great things in here to kind of bring out. So let me show you a couple of them here. Let's just read through. Uh, let's read through the Psalm together and we'll, I'll pause and highlight a couple of things. You've been with us for 120 days. You know how we do it, right? So here we go. Psalm 145, I will extol you, my God and my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. I will praise your name forever and ever. Boy, wouldn't it be great if this was daily our attitude? If it's not, like, let's pray that God would change our hearts so that this would daily be our attitude, that we're blessing his name forever and ever, that we're praising his name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I love this. You might remember, I think it's from Psalm 78. I'll make a note of it here and I'll make sure to correct it if it's wrong in the blog. But you might remember from Psalm 78 that, uh, well, that th the people who wandered in the wilderness and then they went into the promised land, that they did not teach the next generation the things of God. And so the next generation grew up neither knowing God nor the things of God. We saw that also in Joshua and Judges. And it kind of begs the question, like, how is it that one generation of people can know and serve the Lord, but then their kids, their, the next generation doesn't know God? And so I love this sentiment here again. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare of your mighty acts. Can I just encourage you to find and create opportunities to talk about the work of God, to talk about who he is, to talk about what he's accomplished, to talk about his greatness, to talk about uh, the work that he's done in your life and the saving work he's done in your life and the way that he has provided for you and met your needs. Find ways to talk about what God has done to the next generation. Verse five, on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. So all these verses here are kind of giving us hints at what we should think about on, on in terms of God on a daily basis, but also what we should proclaim. So we're proclaiming the splendor of his majesty and we're meditating on his wondrous works every day. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. So like, look, if we're just kind of making a list here, I, I will bless your name. I will praise your name. You're, you're greatly to be praised. Your greatness is unsearchable. And then here's what we should do. We should talk about your the splendor of your majesty. We should talk about your wondrous works awesome deeds, all of your greatness and your abundant goodness and all of your righteousness. Like these are the things that we should be talking about when we talk about God, that this is who he is. Look at what he's done. Look at what he's accomplished. Look at how through the death of Christ, righteousness has been ushered into the earth. Look at these things. And like, I would encourage you, like find some time today with your friends or your family, sit down for five minutes and just say, hey, let's just talk about how great God is for five minutes and let that be something that we do. And golly, it makes me think, here I am, I'm a preacher and I'm doing these things with my family and uh, or for my family with my family in mind. And, and I just, I need to be better at this. I need to be better at proclaiming the majesty and the wonder of God and his awesome deeds and his greatness. So the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in love. That should be somewhat familiar to you because it's in Exodus 34, 6 and 7. It's referenced in about a dozen places in the Old Testament. This is the name by which God reintroduces himself to Moses um, after Moses has come down from the mountain and the people have engaged in idolatry. And God reintroduces himself to Moses and says, I am the Lord, the Lord God, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I will by no means clear the guilty. Uh, but I will visit the righteousness of the righteous on them for a thousand generations. And so just God talking about himself, and it's the name that other writers, and this is, this is in the Psalms, this isn't Moses, but there are other writers who use that same name of God to declare who he is. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. That's us, by the way, guys. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. They shall tell of your power. So here's some more stuff. The glory of his kingdom, tell of his power, and they will make known to the children of man your mighty deeds, your glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful in all of his words and kind in all of his works. I love that. And it makes me think of Psalm 119, 68, which says, you are good and do good. And we'll see that also here later in this Psalm. 
The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed low or bowed down. I love this. God is our help. The eyes of all look to you and you give them food in due season. This might make you think of Job uh, 38. This might make you think a little bit of Exodus 16 and the manna that God provided to the people. And so the Lord is righteous. Oh, sorry. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. He's righteous in all his ways. He's kind in all of his works, right? Everything he does is good. I'm going to recommend again, uh, go listen to this song by Shane and Shane, Psalm 145. Go and listen to it. It's a beautiful song. The Lord is near to all who call on him, all who call on him in truth. So if you're sitting here and you're like, man, I'm calling out to the Lord. God is drawing near to those who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries and he saves them. The Lord preserves. Now, this is key. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. So there is no debate in the Bible that there are the categories of righteous and wicked. There are both the righteous and the wicked. And we all fall into one of those two categories. What we have tended to do, what we've done in the past and I think what we've done very poorly in the past is that we have made righteous and wicked about behavior. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't wicked deeds and righteous deeds, but righteousness and wickedness in the Bible is based upon faith. And so God calls those wicked who do not put faith in him, and he calls those righteous who do put faith in him. You and I are not righteous because of any, of any works that we have done. We are righteous by faith. And so that makes us go back in our minds and think of stuff like Psalm 14, Psalm 53, and then Romans 3. Uh, and it makes us think of, oh, Philippians, Philippians 3, 9. I know I've mentioned that recently as well that we have received a righteousness that comes through faith. You and I cannot be righteous based on our own works. You and I cannot be righteous based on what we've done. Righteousness is a matter of faith. And so God, having us having put faith in the work of God, God is the provider of salvation through Jesus Christ. Having done that, having put faith into Christ, we now have been declared righteous. And so the righteous and the wicked... God preserves the righteous. God preserves those who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever. So when we look at this psalm, there's so much here to unpack. And, and I want to come back up here to the top for a minute. And I, would, I just want to, I want you to take a moment to just, together, let's focus on this. So what does it mean that, that one generation is committing God to another. We're, we're, taking, we're taking who God is and we're, we're showing him to the next generation. His majesty and his wondrous works. So, yes, I, I think a lot of times what we do is we talk about, oh, here's what God did for me, which is not a bad thing to do. It's not bad to talk about what God's done for me. I, I've watched God in 29 years of ministry. I've watched God provide for me financially over and over and over again and to meet all of our needs. And I... I love to speak of that, but God is full of majesty on his own. God is full of wondrous works all on his own. And to, to see this, to, to think, what is it that makes God majestic? What is it that makes God good? It's not, it's not first what he's done for us. It's first who he is. God is, is full of majesty in his, his own power. He's done awesome deeds, uh, and, and he, he is great in and of himself. And so, yes, we look at the great deeds that God has done. We look at the things that God has accomplished. We are reminded of him bringing Moses and the people out of Egypt, and we are reminded of how he gets victory over the enemies. We're reminded of Christ. We're reminded of the death of Christ. We're reminded of the empty tomb. We're reminded of salvation that he has given to us as a free gift, not by anything that we've done or anything that we've merited. And, and we say, look, God is good and he is righteous. But this one here, that God is righteous, the other thing to consider on that is, is that because God is righteous, he demands that we be righteous. And so we come back down here and we are reminded that none of us are good. None of us are righteous on our own. No one is seeking after God, but by faith in Christ. And it's the cross of Christ that by faith in Jesus, that we are brought into fellowship with the Father. And so, look, I love this psalm. I would encourage you to maybe read it through with your family today. 
uh, and or your friends, your coworkers, whoever, pick, pick a couple of people. And then especially these first 11 verses, take a moment to make known to each other who God is and what he has accomplished and how you have seen God's power and beauty and majesty. And then tomorrow we'll be in Psalm 146 and 147. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Thank you so much for journeying with us today at Simpler Bible through another section of scripture where we come to know and understand God a little bit better. Look, if you're brand new to Simpler Bible, we have all sorts of resources available for you. Go to our website, simplerbible.com, and there you can find these videos, you can find our podcast, you can find links to our social media, and you can even find a blog post with additional scriptures if you want to go into a little bit more study than we had time to cover in this podcast and video today. We hope that this tool will be exactly that for you, a tool. Not something that replaces your daily walk with God, but something that enhances your daily walk with God and helps you to know and enjoy Him more. Thank you so much for being part of this, and we'll see you again tomorrow.